Jose Santana is with us today. Jose, welcome back. Thank you, Bruce. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Well, here, you know, here we are, right? Uh, a lot of the cities are opening back up, and um, and with that opening, uh, the the prisons are following, and uh, we understand that uh, in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, they're going to resume uh, visitation. So that is going to be uh, an interesting process as uh, the BOP gets ready to offer some degree of family visitation. What do you think some of the challenges Aren't are you glad be you're not in an institution, uh, with visit, you know, with the visitation? It, it's a sad time for everybody in the, in the world. I mean, you can't hug your loved ones. You can't shake hands like you used to. Uh, so visitation will be uh, no less challenging. As we know, uh, when the pandemic hit, the Bureau of Prisons suspended social visitation for inmates and their families. Um, although they were afforded 500 uh, telephone minutes, versus the regular 300s they had um, per month at no charge to help compensate uh, back then for the suspension of social visits and still remains. Um, you know, but now the Bureau of Prisons will open up again, will resume in-person social visits uh, for inmates uh, at all 122 facilities nationwide, Bruce. Uh, so this will start no later than Saturday, October the 3rd, 2020. and. Just to give you a little, uh, a little synopsis of what's going to happen, all visitations will be non-contact and social dis- distancing between inmates and visitors uh, will be enforced. Uh, you know, they, the, the Bureau is going to be using either um, some plexiglasses like we've seen um, in restaurants and nationwide everywhere where businesses are conducting this type of, of barriers. Uh, or physical distancing, for example, at least six feet apart. Uh, Inmates in quarantine, the inmates, the the loved ones that are in quarantine will not participate in social visiting. So that's an important thing. If the loved one of of folks, loved ones are in quarantine, they should not go to visiting because they're not going to be allowed to visit. Uh, Right. Also, the number of visitors in the visiting rooms will be based on available space. using uh, social distancing uh, measures. Uh, The frequency and length of visits will be established also to ensure all visitors have an opportunity to visit uh, at least twice a month. Twice a month, okay. Visitors should expect to be uh, symptom screened, temperature checked. Uh, Visitors who are sick or symptomatic uh, will not be allowed to visit. Uh, both inmates and visitors will wear appropriate face coverings, uh, no bandanas or those things that they're using. Um, they will perform um, the face coverings, masks at all times, uh, hand hygiene just before and after visiting, uh, tables, chairs, and other equipment uh, of high touch areas uh, will be disinfected between visiting groups and all the areas to include the, the, the reception area, the lobbies uh, will be clean also following the visit. So it's going to be a challenging, it's going to be a challenging um, time for the Bureau of Prisons to manage the amount of visitors. I could, I could remember the lines that were formed out in, you know, in Beaumont, in Guaynabo, in, in all those places, they were out there. Uh, the, the lines of visitations were incredible. So imagine during this pandemic time, it's going to be just um, multiplied because of the social distancing in lines and in the visiting rooms and then the limitations of capacities inside the visiting room. So, man, it's, it's, it's a tough time for the Bureau of Prisons to manage their populations and, and implement visiting again. So. Yeah, especially with CDC guidelines, and I know that uh, safety departments are going to be <coughs> on, you know, tasked with uh, the, the brunt of this. And I am going, and you know, I'm glad to see the visitation uh, uh, still, you know, still get back, and it helps with a more humane environment. Uh, you know, I think, I, I think with this COVID nineteen, I think quarantining people uh, has done more harm than. Uh, 
the COVID-19 itself. I'm not talking about inmates. I'm talking about people in nursing homes, uh, people that are at home and not able to access care and domestic violence in the home, alcohol and drug abuse. So, man, you know, just just having that human contact goes a long, long way. And um, for everybody, uh, particularly uh, inmates in, in prison. Remember, the difference between jail and prison is that in jail, it's more of a transient population. There's actually innocent people in jail, believe it or not, a little bit. But in prison, right, people got to stay there for an upwards of years or even decades or sadly uh, the rest of their natural life. So uh, the, the prison population is more, more of a population that stays there. So, well, that's... Uh, I that, that, agree with you, Bruce. It's, it's a relief yeah. now for... Uh, the inmate and the families to see the love restriction is a it's an important component of the of the adjustment and rehabilitation of the inmate population. So, 